Thank you, Chris. Uh, yeah, so hi, I'm Josh, and uh, this is a talk that initially meant, was meant to be sort of a lightning talk, stunt talk joke. But actually, the more I work with spreadsheets, the more serious I am that uh, they're awesome and we should all be more familiar with them. So uh, just real briefly, disclaimer, I am here representing myself. I do work for Google. I am a volunteer for the Open Source Initiative. But I don't represent either of them here today. Uh, so this, for me, can't hear me well? No? OK. I will uh, work on projecting. So this, for me, is like an ode to old or boring or uncool technology. Uh, I think most of us know, uh, many of us know, that in tech, ooh, shiny is, is sort of the, the, the thing that uh, drives many of our careers and many of our technical decisions, unfortunately. Uh, so I was going through some things that I inherited from my grandfather who passed away last year. And uh, he worked for Hughes Aircraft Company, who worked on projects like Voyager for NASA. And I was going through some of the, the manuals, some of the things that he had in his office. Uh, and I noticed that this one page that seems timeless, uh, in this large report about uh, some technology I couldn't understand, uh, I found this one little nugget. Don't discard old, old techniques. And they were saying this in 1983. Um, in a mechanical, electrical engineering context, we know also that it's true in software uh, development as well. And I think there's a lot to that. So the, ver the merits of spreadsheets. Why am I here talking about spreadsheets, aside from the fact that I just have too much fun with them? Uh, they're familiar. So a lot of people. Uh, inevitably end up using spreadsheets, whether it's for managing their personal budgets, uh, for managing projects, uh, you know, whatever the case may be. Most people who work with computers ultimately, at some point, end up working with spreadsheets. So they're familiar. Batteries are very much included. Uh, you've got string manipulation functions. You've got, of course, a ton of things for working with numbers, whether it's uh, statistics or geometry or calculus or uh, calculating interest rates, uh, you name it, it's, it's all there. Of course, it also has a number of uh, logical operators, so your formulas can get ridiculous and do pretty sophisticated things. They're maintainable. Uh, so one thing I've run into is I've, I've built a bunch of tools with spreadsheets, and uh, I've added a lot of code to them, which uh, is, makes them less maintainable. Ideally, you use spreadsheets and mostly use formulas only, uh, because formulas are things that anybody can edit pretty freely. Um, the idea behind me saying that spreadsheets are maintainable-ish is that you don't necessarily need a software developer to maintain a spreadsheet, um, which is great. Uh, because especially if you're like me and you work on a team of program managers who do outreach, uh, some of us have technical backgrounds, some of us don't. All of us know spreadsheets. So if I build tools and spreadsheets, they feel comfortable managing them, which is great. They're super extensible, um, like really, really extensible. You can add custom formulas. Yeah, of course, you can do macros, which means you can do basically anything, because whether it's uh, Visual v VBA or Google Apps Script or whatever LibreOffice Calc uses, um, you can basically do anything uh, plug spreadsheets into anything. And this is one thing that I really love, is that because spreadsheets, applications that manage spreadsheets come with other office applications, uh, they integrate pretty nicely with other back office applications. So that might be uh, Gmail, that might be, uh, that might be Outlook, that might be Docs. So you can do some ridiculously, ridiculous things by gluing these together. So I'm going to tell you a little about uh, what I have been doing with spreadsheets. So I'm a CFO for the Open Source Initiative, so I naturally have an excuse to work with uh, dollar figures a lot. Every year I build an annual budget for us, uh, as well as financial projections to help us figure out, like, help us, you know, uh, make decisions about how we spend money. Of course, 
use them to calculate interest payments. Uh, it was 2017, June of 2017, when Chris and I bought a new car, and we were trying to figure out how we should finance it. And I remember uh, we were figuring out what the trade-offs were between various scenarios. And uh, Chris, as he's wont to do, pulls out a command, uh, you know, pulls out his terminal, opens Python, um, and starts thinking about, okay, well, how am I going to do the math to, to figure out these different scenarios? Being that I live in spreadsheets practically, I said, wait a second, I think there are some functions that can help us do this. And sure enough, like, they're, they're built in. Uh, so that was an obvious choice for us. There are a lot of other examples sort of moving up the chain of complexity and ridiculousness uh, that I would like to share, but really we only have so much time, so I'm just gonna jump to the most ridiculous thing that I personally have done with spreadsheets, which is something, just build a tool that I call uh, the generator. So through Google Summer of Code and Google Coding, which are outreach programs that our team runs to get uh, students into open source, we have to do a lot of, say, high touch interaction with people. Uh, we have to send visa letters to mentors who want to attend the mentor summit. We have to send visa letters to students who won the Google Coding uh, contest and want to attend the grand prize trip. We have to send them certificates and uh, all manner of like things that are personalized to them. And could we do this with our web apps that run the programs? Yeah, we could. But do we? Nah, nah. Instead, I built something called the generator, and what it does is it takes a data source, which is a sheet, uh, and it takes templates, uh, which take the form of Markdown documents or Google Docs. And what it does is it merges that data source with those templates and it will send personalized emails with personalized attachments. Now this may not sound um, all that exciting to you, but some back of the napkin math shows that I've saved uh, about 0.6 of a full-time employee uh, just over the last year uh, by having created the generator. There are all manner of ridiculous things, repetitive, error-prone things that we were doing that we're no longer doing because the generator is doing it. So, because we can, uh, I'm just going to show you a little bit. So, this is uh, this is the generator. You'll notice there's a there's a presets worksheet. There's an archive with all the stuff that we've already generated and sorted out. And then there's a queue of things that have been recently done or still need to be done. Uh, one thing that's a challenge with spreadsheets is frankly they're not that readable. Um, and so I've created a thing that allows you to select a row and view its contents on the side and maybe take some actions on it. This is a pattern that we actually see a lot at work. So we have a, a spreadsheets for lots of things um, and tons of data in them. And we use little sidebars that just load in the key details for us that makes it a little easier for us to review them. So we're not scrolling horizontally across massive spreadsheets all the time. So there's the sidebar, there's the menu that I've added that has all manner of things, super exciting. There's a total, there's a workflow that I've built here. So initially, what would happen is you would set the generator off doing some work, it would do some work, and after five minutes it would die. Because with Google Apps Script, there's a timeout. If your script takes more than five minutes to complete, it will just time out. So what I've done is I've built a, an interface uh, on top of a spreadsheet, questionable, but it's been done. Um, and what this does is it allows people to go through the workflow and then ultimately, you know, configure, configure things, preview it, send test emails, et cetera, and ultimately arrive at something like this that will, uses a, you know, just makes asynchronous JavaScript calls to actually process the stuff on the back end in one or two minute chunks, and it calls back, reports on its progress, and then kicks off again. So now we've got a thing where uh, I think there are maybe 20 presets in this tool 
Uh, these are all things that we need to do multiple times every year with hundreds or thousands of people. Uh, we will go into the generator, we'll pull up that preset, we'll point it to a data source and the templates, and then we will set it going. And the nice thing is we can actually like click start and walk away and this will take care of uh, the work for us. Because, you'll notice here, there's like a, there's a quota I mentioned down here. Uh, 1,999 email recipients left in your quota. Uh, as an individual, I can only send about 2,000 emails in every, any 24 hours before getting my account locked down, which is probably a reasonable thing for Google to be doing. Um, sometimes we have way more emails than that to send out. So what we do is we will load things into the generator and I will exhaust my quota, and then I'll tell my colleague uh, to pick up where I left off. And so my colleague can go ahead, <laughs> figure out which things they want to work on, and uh, go ahead and complete the task. So this is um, maybe going a little too far with spreadsheets. Um, you can answer that yourself. Uh, but it works and it saves us a lot of time, which is uh, what really matters for us. So, on the topic of going too far, um, when all you have is spreadsheets, all, all you have uh, as a tool is spreadsheets and everything looks like a problem, you should probably solve with spreadsheets, and that's what I've been doing. Until one day, I thought maybe, as someone who, of, of all the formal training I have, which is actually not a whole lot, uh, I have formal training in uh, SQL and working with databases. And one day when I found myself writing a function called left join sheets, I thought, <laughs> yeah, uh, I thought maybe, maybe I've gone too far. Um, that function still lives in a few things that I've made. Uh, I have found other ways to approach that that are far more reasonable. Um, so, you know, if you, hit, if, you, if you hit left join sheets, you've gone too far. But other people have taken this far further than I have. Um, there is, this is a terrible screenshot, I apologize for that, uh, but there's an individual who has built a version of the two, 2048 game in Excel. Um, they've actually also like, changed its format so it looks like you're working on financial statements. Uh, <laughs> it's a little, little subversive there. Uh, but you can do more than things that uh, you know, are fun but still look ultimately like a spreadsheet, you could build Monopoly. <laughs> or you could build a 3D game. So not content to just drop that and uh, not show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> We're going to watch about a minute and seven seconds of this glorious thing here. Yeah, the frame rate's not great. So, <laughs> now what's really incredible about this, uh, so while I've gone off in built tools with spreadsheets that use tons of code. Uh, this can actually be accomplished with no code at all uh, and just formulas. Uh, the post that provides more information about this is fascinating and it's, it's well worth a read. Um, I mean, come on, how cool is that? So that... <laughs> So that is where, if you read the original post, uh, you'll find that the, the author says they were able to build a 3D rendering engine uh, and, and all manner of things with just formulas, but they did have to use macros or code to actually accept key, keyboard input. Otherwise, they could only take action when someone changes the value in a cell, right? Okay. Enough of that madness. Okay, so that's all well and good, that's entertaining, but seriously, 
could we actually use modern development workflows around spreadsheets? And the answer is maybe. Uh, version control? Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. No problem. Uh, LibreOffice article here has, notes that there's a way to uh, save the sheets as uh, XML files so that it's not a binary blob that's just messing up your, your Git repo or whatever. Uh, with Excel, it's a little, um, little more complicated. Uh, I wasn't able to find an answer to whether you could reasonably version the Excel document itself, but you certainly can with VBA code. And it's uh, built into Sheets, which is very convenient. Uh, both version control for the, uh, for the document as well as the, any code that you write on top of it. Uh, what about deployment? I'm not sure. Really, really not sure how you would achieve that with Calc or Excel. These are files that you're shipping around. They're not necessarily like services uh, that you could seamlessly roll out updates to. But you came with Google Sheets, which is kind of cool. Uh, so there's a new tool within, uh, rolled out in the last couple of years called Clasp, which is a command line utility for uh, working with Google Apps Script. So you can uh, work on your code locally, you can deploy it, uh, you can version it, et cetera. Uh, because you have your code stored locally, not only then could you have it stored in Google's own, like Google Drive version control, version control system, but you could also have it in Git or Mercurial or uh, your favorite uh, version control. You could also use add-ons. So, uh, you know, they're like Chrome and Firefox and other browser extensions. Turns out there are also extensions and add-ons for, uh, for individual applications within G Suite. Uh, and add-ons is a way where you actually could roll out changes, deploy changes to your code uh, to users. So you couldn't exactly have the most modern development workflow around this kind of stuff, not easily at least. It takes some effort. Uh, but if you're using something like Sheets and Clasp, you can absolutely work on your code locally, uh, have uh, deploy it after going through a code review process. Um, you can have it in version control. You can do all of the things that you typically want to do. Testing, uh, okay, maybe it's not going to be completely modern workflow, but uh, you can get a little closer. Okay, so what? So what? There's one thing in all of this that I'm actually serious about, and that's old technology, established technology. Um, it's really easy for us to use whatever tool we're familiar with or using in the moment uh, on any given problem. So for myself, I was a Drupal web developer for about 10 years, and everything I built was on Drupal, whether it was a small informational website, a back office application, or, um, actually built some games on Drupal 2, which was kind of ridiculous, probably not the right choice to make there. So when we're thinking about making, choosing technologies to solve problems, uh, let's keep in mind that there are established solutions that uh, may not be like the flavor of the moment, but are entirely adequate. Um, let's also keep in mind that for a lot of things, if this is a tool that is going to be used by people who don't uh, don't code, uh, or this is a tool that you want people to feel ownership in and you want them to be able to maintain it. Spreadsheets are familiar to just about everybody who works in an office. Uh, so, you know, maybe don't write an application and find yourself writing a function called left join sheets, uh, but consider spreadsheets. Thank you. All right. Thank you.